In this video, I will be narrating the thoughts that occurred to me when assessing this individual Gerbera plant, this Gerbera daisy in a cut flowers nursery when diagnosing it for um, what eventually ended up being fusarium disease, uh, which the people at the nursery referred to as sugar rot or crown rot. Um, so as I start, you obviously noticed that the flower was showing signs of cytolysis, which um, was evident with the oozing liquid out of the stem. Here I'm checking the other parts of the stem for similar discoloration, perhaps inside the stem instead of outside of it. You can get a good look, if you didn't already, at the um, gnarled sort of twisting and uh, weird growth that occurred. I'm also looking at these new leaves, which seem to have purple, violet um, coloration, as well as um, brown tips. This was not seen as much on the older leaves. Something that was normal for a lot of Gerbera plants was an excess of dead leaf litter, which I'm noticing here, um, which can be a reservoir for the spores of certain diseases. There are flower buds and even a fern in the center of this plant. This was on rock wool, by the way, um, that seemed to be unaffected. So I get rid of some of the um, litter, and as I do, I look at the crown of the plant, and I don't see very much um, fermentation going on at that moment. Some of the plants that were not lucky enough to be treated in time um, succumb to the Nitidulidae, the sap eater beetles, particularly the pineapple beetle and the strawberry beetle. Um, here we can see the grubs, the larval form of these beetles, infesting the rotting stump or crown of a Gerbera plant. We can see a few leaves that are barely hanging in there. I remove them to sort of disturb the, I guess, sort of quasi-colony that we have here and to get better footage for my narration. We can see that one of the grubs here has left the stump. It will eventually fall into the pot and possibly be swept up by the nursery's gutter system. For a grub, that could be a death sentence, essentially. But for adults that uh, exist near the stump, it's not a problem at all. They can fly. So the larvae that exist on the stump here, this crown that's rotting, it will, or they will pupate, they will turn to adults, and then the adults will spread, or can spread, and act as a vector, the disease fusarium. And fusarium can be, uh, or at least the spores can be uh, stored. They can essentially be dropped off at a location and just stay there for a very long time. They can exist in soil for quite a while, depending on the environment. And this makes it quite a challenge to affect good treatment and good control. But other plants can be saved if the proper procedures are taken. Now, one of the things that the people who own the nursery decided to do was to bag up the infected plants and simply throw them away. It made economic sense for them to do that, but it's not every crop that will be able to use that as a effective treatment, partly because the plants might cost too much, perhaps they can't afford to lose the production, maybe there's a ton of plants that have been infested and cannot be saved, and it's just too far gone. But if you're only dealing with a few of these plants that have been infected by fusarium, taking a aggressive, an aggressive immediate move and stance might be able to save many of the other plants. 
These beetles, however, didn't come out of a vacuum, and they might be existing close by on the property in other places where this sort of fungal mass can exist or where other organisms that give off a similar like vinegary um, fermented scent that attracts them because essentially at the end of the day what you're trying to fight is the primary infection which is the fusarium and the secondary infestations of these beetles. To quickly sum up some of the points that I've made in this video, which is quite short, there are two sap eater beetles, nitidulidids, the pineapple beetle, and the strawberry beetle. There are others in this group, but these are the two that I found in these plants, and they are vectors for fusarium. Get rid of the fusarium and the breeding spots, you get rid of the beetles. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it educational or at least informational. Maybe pointed some people in the right direction regarding um, some odd symptoms in somebody's plants or perhaps they came across similar beetles. However you found this video, I hope it's been helpful in some way. And if you are interested, I have linked two other videos that are related to the footage and the topic or topics that were in this video. Primarily the beetle footage, I have more of that, and I have more information and more footage on Gerbera.